Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Baxter and I'm a developer advocate for Bluemix at IBM. And in my previous video, I showed you how to uh, add a build stage to your project in IBM DevOps Services to do a build of a very simple Maven project. So uh, at the end of that video, you had a build pipeline that looked something like this, um, which was doing a basically a Maven build and packaging up an application into a WAR file. Now the obvious next step is to deploy that WAR file to Bluemix. So let's go ahead and add a stage to do that as well. So click the Add Stage button. And this is going to be our deploy stage. And the, out, the input type of this deploy stage is going to be the job outputs uh, of the build stage uh, of the build job within that build stage. So uh, this is already properly configured here. Um, it's pretty easy to, that this is pretty nice that this gets auto configured, especially since there's only one um, uh, one other stage uh, in this build pipeline anyway. So um, that's pretty simple. Um, now the next decision you need to make is the stage trigger. Do you want it to automatically execute this stage after the previous stage finishes, or do you want to execute this stage uh, uh, manually? Um, I'm going to choose to let this automatically execute after the previous stage uh, finishes in this case, uh, but you can make your own choice there. Um, in the jobs uh, section, you want to add a deploy job. And um, we're going to deploy to uh, Bluemix here, uh, in this case the, uh, the Dallas data center. Um, and I'm going to deploy it to my organization in a space called Javaland, and the application name is going to be Javaland Todos. And actually, we have uh, somewhat of a deployment uh, script already set up here. So you can see that the deployment script for the deploy stage actually uses the Cloud Foundry command line uh, utility to do the deployment. Um, now, <clears throat> if you're already familiar with the Cloud Foundry command line uh, tool, um, then you know uh, all the commands that you can use here. Uh, and some of the options to uh, to deploy your application. So the most common one to use to deploy uh, your application is a CF push command, which is the one that you see listed here already. Um, in this case, we have an environment variable name called uh, CF underscore app. Uh, and this CF underscore app uh, environment variable actually just refers to the application name. So it's basically saying CF push uh, Java land to do's. Um, but this environment variable allows you to keep your scripts kind of abstract um, possibly reuse them across many different deployments. Uh, now, in our case, we actually want to uh, specify a very specific WAR file uh, uh, name for our application. So we actually want to specify our WAR file as well here. Um, but in addition to that, our application is likely going to use services, right? In this case, this specific application uses a cloud and service. Um, so I can't just push this application and then, um, you know, just hope that the um, the uh, the cloud and service is bound to that application. Um, I should really push the application, make sure the cloud and service is bound, and then go ahead and start the application. So uh, while this basic uh, CF push command might work for some applications, it, it's not going to work for every application. So you need to customize this to uh, to your needs. In addition, my, my application that we're pushing here also requires us that we opt out of the, the Liberty Build Pack auto configuration for Cloudant um, because uh, we've already included most of the jars and libraries that, that my application needs uh, within the WAR file itself. So I don't want to have any potential conflicts between jars provided by the Liberty Runtime and jars included in my application itself. So I want to opt out of that auto configuration which means I need to specify an environment variable as well before I even start my application. So I actually need to do a couple things before, uh, in addition to the push and before my application starts. So I need to customize the script uh, a little bit to, to get things to work. So the CF push app name will actually work uh, for me, but I need to specify uh, the WAR file as well. And the way I do that was with a dash P option. And then I'm just going to copy and paste the name of my WAR file so I don't uh, mess it up uh, here as well. Um, and I'm going to 
also optionally specify the amount of memory I want my application to use, which is going to be 512 megabytes. And like I said, I don't want my CF push command to start my application right away because I need to specify, I need to bind the service as well as set an environment variable um, before I start my application. So I'm going to add the dash dash no dash start parameter to my CF push command. So this is basically just going to push the WAR file and not start the application. The next thing I need to do is bind my service. So I'm going to do a CF bind service. And again, I'm going to use uh, the app name environment variable since it's the first parameter to the bind service command. Um, and the name of my Cloudant service in the space that I'm pushing it to is actually to dash db. So that's the name of the Cloudant service that I want to bind to my application. Um, and next, I want to set my environment variable. So cf set uh, dash env is the uh, command we want to call here. And again, we'll say uh, set the environment variable of this application. Now, the name and value of the environment variable is going to be this here. So it basically says um, to exclude the auto configuration for the cloud and service. That's what that environment variable is basically doing. And then last but not least, we're going to CF start my application, which is going to be this environment variable again here the CF app environment variable. And uh, that's it. So um, while the, the, uh, the provided or initial default uh, CF push command might work for some applications, uh, most applications are going to need to make sure that if service is bound, some may even have to set environment variables. So you might have to customize this script a little bit, but even, even so you can see that it's not that hard to do. Uh, you have access to all the CF uh, command utilities that you would uh, as if you're using it on your local machine. So uh, the deployment script uh, should be fairly easy to construct. Um, but that's about it for our deployment script. So we can just click Save here. This will save our deployment stage. Um, and our deployment stage hasn't yet run. So let's go ahead and run it. Now it's going to... Um, uh, use the build artif artifacts that were produced in the previous build stage, right? So we already have done one build which has produced a WAR file. So when I go ahead and run this stage, it's going to use that WAR file that was produced in the previous stage uh, for the deployment. So I'm going to click on my deploy job here and I'm going to click run stage and this will kick off our uh, deployment. We'll be able to see the logs in real time as they show up here. Um, uh, we can see that it is now running. And we'll see here pretty much the same thing that we would see in our own terminal window if we were doing this locally. Okay, so our application has finished being deployed to Bluemix. So we, we go back to uh, our stage history here. Um, it will actually show us that our application is deployed to Bluemix here. Um, it is running, uh, so we can now see that it's tied to this application here in Bluemix. So if I go to my Bluemix dashboard here, we can see that the service was bound to the application and that the environment variable that I defined was also set here in Bluemix. So um, our deployment works successfully. And that's how easy it is to use uh, IBM DevOps services to do your build and deploys of your main projects. Thanks for watching.